In this video, we're going to talk about loops. Loop start and loop end, or length, and I'll show you how to change that too. Okay, so once again, we're going to return with our lovely vocal sample. I think it's a good one to play around with loop length on. We could also do it with a drum loop, um, but we're going to use this one for now. Okay, so in regular loop mode, we're talking about this. And we talked about the two different loop modes in a previous video, so you can watch that if you missed that. So in classic assimilator form, I think these screens are just really simple. So you can navigate with loop start and loop end, or length, with using these. Or, just like sample start and sample end, you can click back and forth with these two buttons. And just like sample start and sample end, the green is the start, the red is the end. So I'm going to start by playing with sample end first. We're going to explain end first. So to switch between length and end, you just hold this button down and you'll see it change right up there. So now we're in sample end. And you can use this one here to dial the red line really quickly to get kind of in the ballpark of where you want to be. And then you can click on this one here and dial in to the exact single cycles right down here. So this is called the high resolution display that, that's all zoomed in, right? So let's get this guy loop in here. So we're going to turn on that mode. So it's going to start right here at the second loop, right? Then you go to loop end, all the way down to a single cycle. <laughs> so if you were wondering how to make an oscillator or a single cycle out of any sound file you've got, that's how to do that. Okay. So now, let's stop this looping. So now, if you want to play with length, this is another game. So we're currently on loop end here. But if you hold down this button, watch that change. It'll change to length. So now when you're in length mode, if you go to sample start, you'll see that it moves the whole thing as a group. Because you've established this length here. So that could work like this. Back in loop mode, trigger. Change the length. Start point. So a quick word on loop end versus loop length. I think that loop end, you would typically choose endpoint mode when you're trying to ensure that a sample loops at a specific point in the sample. I would use loop length mode when the loop is matched to a rhythm or a tempo and you want to make sure that that loop is always exactly in the same length. And in classic assimilator form, all of these things are CVable. So changing the start point, or the length, or if you're in loop end mode, same thing, the start point or the loop end. These are all CV addressable, just by simply clicking on it and pointing to any of the plugs on the matrix. Just a few words about sample editing and splicing and getting smooth transitions. This red line in the center of the display is the splice point between the loop's end point and its start point. 
So the right side of the display is the beginning of the loop and the left side is the end. It might be kind of counterintuitive, but it makes sense if you think about it because it's coming around in a circle. So the goal in programming a good loop is to end with the smoothest transition across that red splice point. So there's two main elements to a smooth loop. One is a smooth level transition at that splice point and also a smooth shape transition. So if you go up to loop start, you can see how I can scan these transients and find something where the shape and the level is close, like that, like down at the bottom, like there. One other thing that can help you make this transition smooth and not have a click is to go into the mutate mode, mutate, and turn on smoothing. So this won't fix everything, but it'll help if your transition point here is smooth. This was actually one area of the assimilator that I found a lot of use in reading the manual and uh, reading it again and again and kind of getting closer and tighter to what they were talking about. Anyway, I hope this will get you running on loop start and loop end or length and stay tuned for the next video.